We good? We are good. All right. So, all right. Well, welcome back to the podcast, man. Uh, it's uh, It's been a wild couple weeks for sure. But um, so everybody, welcome to the BDSM podcast, the Booze Deserves Smoke and Meats. This is uh, your one of your co-hosts here, Professor Porkloin. And I'm here with my awesome other co-host. The Meat Viking. And uh, I think we got a good episode today. Now, I know we say that every week, but I think today is going to be kind of some childhood memories and maybe even adults, depending on what you do. But uh, we're going to talk about some shaved ice, man. We are. <laughs> uh, I got a couple of um, stories I'll hit to. Well, mainly just one later on about some shaved ice and... Uh, there used to be this place that we would go to and they had like this um, punch card thing to where if you did all of the flavors and they had like almost a hundred flavors, you could get your name on the wall and like a free t-shirt. And I only ended up ever getting to like flavor 25, but. All right. Well, yeah. it'd be interesting to hear that story. Cause I've got a funny one too uh that i'll touch on later on but i guess before we go man what's the safe word for today oh. well we can't do something like syrup because that's going to be an important part of the topic yeah hmm. there's got to be something <clears throat> something kinky or something whatever that would be going along with that like honey or glaze. <laughs> Let's do glaze. Glaze sounds glaze. fun. Glaze sounds dirty, but yeah, Lovely. that works. <laughs> All right. So glaze is, is the word of the day. Um, yep. So what do you got in the cup, man? So I went with something flavorful. I did a vanilla cream soda and I mixed it with fireball. Ooh, that sounds yeah. like a good, that sounds like a good fall drink mm -hmm. though. Not necessarily a spring slash summer one, but hey, who knows? Maybe it's a little chilly where you're at today. It's not. It's just like, uh, <laughs> it's almost like drinking a cinnamon roll. And that's Ooh, why I like okay. it. Yeah, I've actually made this for you and your wife before. Yeah, it's yep. pretty good. Yeah. So I'm actually going to be making some cinnamon rolls here in the next couple of days. I'm going to do a birthday cake cinnamon roll. So might need to talk about that in a later episode. Yeah, yeah. But I've got a couple of these left that I still need to finish. So I'm just drinking some Hershey's Porter, uh, the chocolate porter. Yeah. I've got like maybe five bottles left. So I just figured I'll get rid of it. But I do have uh, one that I will talk about next time, next episode. Uh, a friend actually went to Hawaii recently and got me some Hawaiian rum. So I need to kind of talk a little bit about that later on. I, all I can tell you is that there's a heavy vanilla flavor to it and it's pretty damn good. So that cigar that I had smoked four episodes back that I got from Hawaii also had that like strong vanilla flavor. So well, uh, I'll talk more about that one next week or the next episode because I think it's a killer ass rum. And I know we've already chatted about rum, but this will just be the drink of the day. So, yeah. Cool. Well, you smoking a cigar today or what? I am. Um, got something I haven't tried before. It is from a person who I have had before. It's Rocky Patel's LB1 premium hand rolled cigar so it's the lb1 which is the original factory code that they had for these cigars and this cigar has got a little bit of everything in it let me read off for you right here uh medium bodied smoke rolled in honduras from a tobacco blend that includes um tobaccos from Liegro in the Dramastron Valley of Honduras. Mixed fillers. Um, and it's all grown on Rocky Patel's farms. And it's just a very nice, like, medium smoke. That, like, 
draws real smooth. Mm. It's like a a nice summer cigar. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, uh, and let's uh, kick into it. If anybody's interested, expect I haven't seen this before, except for on the LB one. If you look up Rocky Patel LB one cigar, you can go through and see from basically the seed to the shelf process of the cigar. And it's super interesting if you're into that kind of thing. Not a bad deal. We'll have to have people go back to our cigar episode and start learning more about those. Mm-hmm. So if you are listening and you haven't heard our cigar episode, go back a couple episodes and, and take a look. We talked a lot about different styles and whatnot too. So, Also, for those of you who watch that video on YouTube, there's a part in there where we throw up uh, a design chart of all different kinds of cigars. And there's one in there that looks like it's three cigars combined in one, kind of intertwined in a rope. And later I found out the reason that is, is that employers could then strictly limit their employees intake of cigars because most cigar manufacturers allow you to smoke three cigars a day. (laughs) That's pretty funny. Right? So, all right, man. Well, let's get into it. Let's talk about some shaved ice. This has got to bring back some some memories. Mm -hmm. Uh, At least what you think shaved ice is. Now, I know as a kid, I didn't have anywhere that had shaved ice. We always had snow cones. Um, And people might be asking, you know, what really is the difference between shaved ice and snow cones? Uh, So shaved ice is essentially you, you freeze right? You get it into some cubes and then you thinly slice that bad boy down and uh, you get more of a consistency of like an ice cream type deal, right? Because then you can um, throw different flavors on it and it's supposed to absorb that flavor. Whereas, whereas shaped ice, I mean, it's essentially, again, it's not so thin. It, it more looks like a snowball kind of like it's clumped. And I don't know how many times I had shaved ice and all that flavoring just went right down to the bottom of that cone, you know, and you're licking and you're eating it. And then you realize that you just got freaking syrup everywhere because the cone busted. Yep. <laughs> so, and yeah. then uh, there's a difference too, between the Italian ice, you might've heard Italian ice as well. Um, so with that one, it's essentially made more like ice cream. You wind up getting all your, your ingredients, you mix it all together, and then you freeze it. So really the big difference is with the shaved ice and the snow cones, you really just have the water, whereas the Italian ice has the ingredients already mixed into it, and then you freeze it. So it's a little bit of a different thing. But man, those things as kids, even the snow cones delicious you know you it was basically just sugar water that was in there now i have to ask you as a kid what was your favorite color to do with at least a snow cone which i'm going to try to use a little bit as entertain interchangeably because i feel like shaved ice is so close to a snow cone that we can kind of talk about both Mm -hmm. so what was your favorite color slash flavor that you had as a kid so i think as a kid everybody does the one kid thing where if you eat something and like a kid next to you sticks their tongue out at you because that's what kids do and then like their tongue's a weird color like blue or like green or something like that i would have to go with one of those colors but i do remember eating a lot of like lemon flavored shaved ice and stuff so okay it might have been a lemon lime to get that green color but see i always remember getting like the blue raspberry so that the whole thing was just blue covered in blue or um cherry was another one that was a very popular one too because it was just red yeah and if you were lucky enough a lot of the times the people would let you do two colors Mm -hmm. so you can do like a a red and blue that you can get some of that purple in there and again if you were really lucky with it there was times where people can do like rainbow colors you can have the the blue yellow 
purple, red, green, and just throw them all together in one snow cone. And it didn't really matter about the taste at that point because you were freaking balling with a, a rainbow freaking snow cone. <laughs> I can't remember the name of the place because there's like three places in the hometown that did shave dice, and one of them was able to make it taste and look exactly like a bomb pop. Oh yeah, yeah. Bomb pops are really good. That mm-hmm. takes. We should talk about some of those ice cream chuck stuff later on. That's not a bad idea, because man, I think I'd always go up to the bomb pop when I get that from the ice cream man. Uh, I don't know, dude. But, I've had me many a Mickey Mouse uh, Mickey Mouse pop before. Yeah, or I'd get a um, an ice cream sandwich. Those yeah. are always be pretty good. Or and. Again, we could talk about this later on too. The those drumsticks. Yeah. But some of the flavors, uh, there's a place that's close to me that does some pretty cool flavors. They usually have like a blueberry lavender, or uh, like some strawberry lemon, and they've got like hibiscus and everything like that. And um, it really does come out like a, a consistency when it starts to melt a little bit, kind of like ice cream. Mm-hmm. But some real popular flavors that are out there. Uh, one that I saw was pickled mango. So that one essentially is they, they take the mangoes and, uh, man, they pickle it with vinegar. They do a little bit of some sugar, salt, and some soy sauce sometimes, depending. So you get this sweet, sour, fruity, shaved ice. And honestly, I don't know if I would try that or not. <laughs> yeah. The, but, uh, the absolute soul-crushing of me knowing I would never get my picture in that t-shirt from that uh, flavored snow cone shop was, like I said before, they had a hundred flavors and one of them flavors was straight pickle. And I had a flavor. I'm not the biggest fan of pickles, but I'll eat them. But I had a flavor that wasn't pickle and I don't remember exactly what it was. I think it was toasted marshmallow. And I just, pretty good. it was, it was good, but like it left this strong aftertaste in my mouth. Like even after brushing my teeth, like twice, I just could not get that bitch out of my mouth. And I was like, <laughs> if I do pickle, I will be tasteless for a week. And I was just like, I'm done. I tapped out. <clears throat> a lot of people will put stuff like coconut cream and things like that as their flavors too. Yep. So kind of give it a little bit, again, going back to that ice cream flavor. But uh, so your story of this this name on the wall. So what happened? You said you had to get 100, 100 flavors, essentially. You had to eat all of them. And, yep. and who's to say that you didn't show proof? How did you stamp or what? Give me the story. So they had, when I first had my order, because it was like a drive through right? And like, I got the order and um, they gave me this little card and they would hole punch the card every time you'd come in with a different flavor. And so you didn't have to eat like all 100 flavors at once. It was like a reward system. I almost feel like you could cheat that by finding what the hole puncher is and just ordering that and then just punching it all the way through. I mean, you probably could. You know, if they really wanted to be smart about that, they probably could have done like a passport thing and then like had a stamp or something that specifically was for that flavor. Right. And then like, because you can't cheat that. <laughs> right. But I mean, like, how badly do you want your picture taken with the free t-shirt? Dude, people will go for some crazy lengths to get some free stuff, That's especially true. if it's a t-shirt slash your name on the wall in the picture. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just look at the people that sign waivers to eat hot ass spicy wings. I was like, actually just gonna say that that famous that famous chain wing restaurant we were talking about the other day, and they used to do a challenge like that. Yeah, there's a couple places that that do that, and it's like, oh hey, we're gonna put some Carolina Reaper sauce on this, and then mix it with mango habanero, so it's gonna be stupid hot, and it's gonna burn your inside. So you're gonna have to sign this waiver mm-hmm. that that releases up of all liability. But you can eat ten of them in five minutes, then your name is up on the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. The wall of bad decisions. That's what all of those walls should be called. 
So I got to throw a little bit of some history in here because I was doing some research on shaved ice before the episode. And, you know, I just I wanted to know a little bit where it came from. And actually, it can be traced back to Japan, like almost a millennia ago. Like Japan's been around for a hot minute. So apparently what they would do is they take shavings from the block of ice. So it doesn't look like it's changed very, very much. And they wind up mixing it with just a sweet syrup. Mm. So the cool thing, well, not really the cool thing, but it was really only accessible for people in, in the elite society or the highest people of society as really ice could only be really found in the winter time. Mm -hmm. so and you needed to store it in large ice houses and obviously poor people didn't have that shit so uh it definitely remained one of those things for a long time of you are higher society you can have this stuff and it really wasn't until the 1900s like the early 1900s when technology started coming around and be like hey we can we can freeze stuff and we can make things last a lot longer that where a lot of uh, poor people could actually afford it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it wound up saying, hey, now, now these, these uh, people who don't have money can actually enjoy the, uh, the shaved ice or at least something similar to it. So, and what it really is interesting is how it's migrated from really Japan, South Korea. And I'm not saying that they still don't have popular stuff, but um, Hawaii has basically taken this whole entire thing of shaved ice and kind of created it its own, mm -hmm. you know, because a lot of the people throughout the Southeast Asia and even East Asia wound up um, flocking to some of those islands. And a lot of the Japanese immigrants arrived with this and saying, hey, we're going to bring this over here. So it's kind of cool because it sets it up pretty nicely since Hawaii is, you know, more of that tropical island all year round. And, um, having that shaved ice and that's where they do all those funky flavors and it's like a tourist thing so i guess if you go to hawaii one day you need to have yourself some shaved ice from hawaii and apparently they have a bunch of different places to get it from i'm down for that so the only thing is that hawaii is expensive so oh yeah <laughs> yeah no no yeah well i guess it depends on where you're flying out of LAX is probably not that bad, but you know, New York probably riding on a plane for a while. Yeah. I don't even, I don't even like standing next to people at work for a long period of time. <laughs> and I know them people. <laughs> so, but I have a funny story of uh, having a shaved ice experience. So, I, I told you that there was a shaved ice place pretty close to where I live. Mm -hmm. Well, I went up that way and, you know, I brought my dogs and everything and we were all having a good old time because it was nice and hot out and it was cool to try some of the shaved ice and because I've never been to it before. And uh, we decided to give our dogs just plain, like nothing, no, uh, no, no syrup or anything on it. It was just literally a ball of shaved ice. We put in a cone and we wound up um, giving two of them because at that time we only had two dogs and one of them licked it was like, okay, cool. I'll, I'll eat some of it. The other one gobbled it down. And then like 10 minutes later, just went bang and puked <laughs> it all up all over the freaking picnic table where people were, were around and I was like, damn it, I have to clean this crap up now. And I felt so bad because it was, again, I mean, the dog was panting and whatnot. And it probably was just too cold for the stomach. Yeah. But, um, man, I had to pick up, like, shaved ice puke and throw it away. And I was like, all right, time to go. We need to leave because we just made a scene. There's puke everywhere. And I was like, all right, let's go home. Yeah. <laughs> That'll happen. Yeah. That'll so happen. That, that, that's definitely my shaved ice, you know, story that I have for actually remembering any of the other times I've had shaved ice. <laughs> and so one time, many, many, many moons ago, we were out somewhere. I don't remember where. We took solo cups and it had just snowed. We took solo cups and we took some of the mixes for shaved ice 
God. And some booze. And yeah, I had an incident much like that of your dogs. You know how dirty snow is, man? That's a yep. dumb I, idea. I did now. <laughs> like it was fresh snow. It wasn't like, you know, yellow. Dude, even fresh snow is still dirty. And you know what? I grew up in the Northeast, so obviously it snowed a lot. And I mean, even as a kid, I remember eating snow, but not really thinking about how dirty it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I grew up fine. I'll be all right. Yeah. Like, I only lost like some of my brain, you know? Like, we'll be okay. <laughs> so, De- definitely don't use Google more often than I should to spell basic words. <laughs> So where where are some other places that you've seen shaved ice? Like as a kid, I always remember it being at like baseball games. You know, there was always the concession stand that had that had that, and you'd get a snow cone or whatever at the end of the game. Or even like we didn't really have shaved ice, but just snow cones in general. Mm-hmm. You know, school events and stuff like that. So have you seen it anywhere else, or have you seen shaved ice anywhere else other than those things? Yep, actually, the uh, the hometown has a fairly famous one that is basically just a trailer, and they park up wherever, and they've got one that'll, like, drive around town, and then they've got one that's, like, a central location just for people to come and get shaved ices at. And did they have that in the, – so the hometown, not where you're currently at, right? Right, right. Okay. Man, like <laughs> – Talk about profitability on that, right? I mean, how hard is it to make ice, for one? You can't really fuck that up. (laughs) I mean, you'd be surprised. Yeah, I know. Your biggest underlying cost is going to be keeping everything cold with a really good refrigeration unit, especially if you're essentially doing this out of a food truck and or a trailer. And then literally just your syrups which i've got a website pulled up um to go over those of you who want to try this at home like some of the best syrup uh, kits to get into and then really you're looking at playing probably an employer to minimum wage so like your overhead's yeah, not, not that high yeah the overhead's not going to be that much you know and even the the cost of goods can't be that much like how much is one of those syrups that you have online what like eight bucks for 750 milliliters or something like that uh, da, da, da. while you're looking that up i mean think about it ice is not going to be that hard to have the machine to chop it all up right mm-hmm. and then you have your flavorings I mean, the ones that that's close to me, I think they sell theirs for like six fifty. Right. But you get a you get a decent amount. I mean, I'm not saying that you're getting a little tiny ass snow cone. You're getting a, a big amount to where a lot of the times people don't even finish it because it's so much. But think about it. You're not spending that much money off it. So your 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 uh your cost has got to be decent. So this price. For a 20 kit, right? It's 20 16 ounce plastic bottles of snow cone syrup for $119. Its servings are approximately 160 ounce, 166 ounce snow cones when using two ounces of flavor with the entire syrup kit. So you get 16 ounces a bottle. You get two ounces per, you know, essentially with the, the stuff. Yep. So you're making about eight snow cones ish with that flavor. So that's that's still not that bad. Right. So I don't know, man. We should go into a snow cone business. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with that. Or or shaved ice business, whatever. Right. Honestly. You're, uh, you might end up spending more in spoons and cups than you would on actual flavor. Yeah. Although some of those you buy in bulk, I mean, it obviously goes down in price. So, 
So if you had to pick right now, man, let's just say that you're going to go get some freaking shaved ice. What would be the flavor that you would go for? Hmm. I know I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah, I'm thinking. Because I just so happened to see one in this 20-pack that I think would taste really good, and that's green apple. Yeah, green apple would be pretty good. Yeah, okay. a nice, nice sour flavor. Although, however, they do have lemon-lime, but I'm kind of feeling the green apple as of this minute. Yeah, green apple sounds pretty good. Yeah. I'd probably have to go with, like, passion fruit or or uh, blueberry Ooh. i like blueberry for some yeah. odd reason the flavors are pretty good but and they'd it's probably not... go well with that green apple too yeah they got a, a dream sickle on here that would probably be really good yeah what's in the dream sickle uh it doesn't say but it kind of looks like it would be uh it's got that orangish color so i'm assuming it's like an orange dream sickle like an orange vanilla Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. They also have, for us fellow foodies who enjoyed the drink, they got a Bahama Mama and a Pina Colada flavor. Now, I wonder if you could sell alcohol with that. Like, I, I wonder if you got a, a liquor license, right, and you did shaved ice or even snow cones, whatever. You know, we're kind of using them interchangeably for this episode. If you could do, like, a, an alcoholic Bahama Mama where you have it in a, maybe not in a, a cone, but like a cup Yep. where you put all the flavor stuff in, throw the little alcohol in there, and then it kind of melts and you're like, all right, well, I'll just slurp it up and drink it. You know what that reminds me of? What's that? I'm sure you've seen them because you can get them here at the grocery store. Those little packets of, uh, I think the brand's dailies. And they're like pre-made drinks that you just throw in the freezer. And then you just oh yeah cut them open and throw them throw them in a glass. Yeah, definitely. I, I wonder uh, I wonder if that would be a popular idea. I'm kind of curious to know if our listeners would do that if they would drink essentially an alcoholic snow cone or or shaved ice. Yeah, I would. Especially if you had like a poolside bar that could do that. Yeah, that wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah. There's there's your million million dollar idea, man. Right. Go ahead and uh get yourself a little stand, get yourself a liquor license and you can start charging people 10 bucks for it. Yeah. Liquor licenses are expensive though. Yeah, but that's where you'd make all your money. Yeah, it's true. Be like, "Here, you can have a snow cone or it's like, here, little Johnny, have a snow cone. And then, okay, mom, let's have a wine slushy or some shit like that. Right. I'm going to oh. charge you $10 for it because you're going to get lit. Yep. Start selling uh, tequila sunrise slushies, snow cones to soccer moms. Yeah. That liquor license will pay for itself. Yeah, man. Well, you figure you get a bunch of booze out of one bottle, you know, even if you did two shots and be generous of it which right. would kind of be a little dumb, but two shots. I mean, you'd still get enough if you charge 10 bucks for one. <laughs> well, if we look at like mixology theory, where a lot of the ratios are two to one, if, as we stated before from that price thing, the average serving size of the flavor mix is two ounces – if your drink calls for simple syrup, you're not going to need any of that. And so if you just did a two, two ounce flavor, one ounce alcohol, you know, you're set. Yeah. You got yourself some stuff. Cause what so. you can get what 20 shots out of a bottle fairly easy. Uh, if you do one and a half ounces, it comes out to like 22 and a half wow. for 750 milliliter. So I was playing 20, 23 somewhere around there. I was playing bartender last night at this fire we went to. There were four of us, and uh, we were making. Uh, I, I was making blackberry mojitos. 
Now that sounds like a pretty good snow cone flavor or like shaved ice flavor. I could totally see the mint and the blackberry being a part of that and making that taste pretty damn good. Oh yeah. And then you just add clear rum so you're not gonna have to worry about like a discoloration or anything. Yeah. So and but a, a mojito sounds really good with the flavor in general. So I mean eating that stuff or drinking it would be pretty that'd be a pretty good flavor anyway. Yep. Just a regular mojito and then have different flavors. Cause I mean you have syrups, right? On that yep. website that you're looking at. Do they have a blackberry one? Uh I saw a blue raspberry, but I think I could find a blackberry one super easy. Um if anything, you could probably find something for maybe like iced tea. Or like bubble tea or something like that yep. and have the same flavoring i would think that would probably work too yeah or you can do so, strawberry mojitos yeah you can find a syrup with that too yep nice mojitos so simple <laughs> to make that's like one of the quintessential drinks so well, I mean, you got any other stuff to talk about with shaved ice or snow cones? I think we kind of covered a lot of the stuff. It's just one thing that's crazy. It's not so much about the shaved ice and the snow cones. Is that how refrigeration itself has worked over the past thousand years to where only emperors would be able to like preserve stuff. And like, if you look at some foods and some traditions they would bury food underground to keep it cooler and then yeah. bury it back up and then yet here we are you can go and just buy a mini fridge from walmart and it's got a little freezing section on it now it's just well, one of those things or even buying a, an ice chest or like a, a freezer like a standalone freezer yep you know a couple hundred dollars and you got yourself hey we'll throw that all in there uh-huh so yeah technology is crazy man i can only imagine what it's going to be like in another 20 30 years what if we'll have i don't know because like cell phones are something that's super huge and you've got technology integrated through cell phone and refrigerations to where you can basically make a grocery list out of your fridge and then people yeah. will deliver it to you. Yeah, it's just, I don't know what the next advancement's going to be in something like that. Yeah, we'll, we'll live it, if, I'm sure. <laughs> well, and, like, the thing you have to consider is, is that consumption is always increasing as population does. And so the more we eat, the more space we need. So it's not like we're going to see these freezers get smaller and smaller yeah you're right so but that's all i got on that subject well i guess we can kind of sign off then huh yeah you well, want to take us out yeah foodies let us know uh what were some of your flavors going through and if you would have made it through the 100 flavor challenge for that shirt and picture on the wall so <laughs> but i've been the meat viking and my wonderful co-host over here Professor Porkloin, I think we're going to sign off. And until next time. Until next time, kiddos. Later. <laughs>